Today we want to give y'all reasons for why your weekend plans need to include watching All Quiet on the Western Front. Cause guys, we've got a behind the scenes look at what went into that film and it's enough to make this a must watch. If you've missed it, don't worry, we've got you. Right now, this takes the cake for being the best anti-war film out there. So if that's got your attention, let's get into it. First up, if you're doing battle scenes, do them right. Look, when a bloody and brutal battle scene is done well, it puts the audience in the middle of of the action, making the cinema all the more necessary so we feel all the anxiety next to all the soldiers. And if it's insanely good, it might even stop us from finishing the popcorn in the first half. You know that's true, even if just from watching the Game of Thrones infamous season 6 episode Battle of the Bastards, or the entirety of Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk, all of which made us take 2-3 to three business days to recover. Still, they'd pumped up their audience like nothing before, and this is exactly what happened in Edward Berger's Netflix. Netflix film, All Quiet on the Western Front. It's an anti-war film that finds its characters going through World War I's gory front lines. And with that, the film really goes in with the realistic picture. You can even tell from some of the actors' interviews that they were there. It had needed to feel like the real deal. But what's more is that now people can watch one of those intense sequences take place in real time, with the finished scene rolling above in a behind-the-scenes look given by the streamer's Twitter account. Guys, it's insane. Even just through that video, you can tell Berger had the right idea in creating these sequences. You know how Hans Zimmer's music just knows how to put you in the moment? Yeah, this director has that down. Following that, what BTS did we get? Well, in the clip, which is from the action-packed and mood-setting opening scene, it shows a soldier getting closer to the enemy. So we're more or less pushed right into the deep end, and with the camera moving as it does, you're holding the tension with the soldier. As you can imagine, adrenaline is gonna build from the beginning, and definitely definitely not stop there. But either way, the audience has taken along on his attempt to make it out alive, with cameras following his every move. And cause we're trying to be quiet here and, you know, not die, the directing talks to the audience a lot in the film. Again, you see how this could have been a quick, cheesy flop if it wasn't so well done. In the video that's released, the completed scene is shown above, and the behind the scenes action is used below, with cameras following the actor closely. And then, explosions, gunshots, and smoke fill the air, with actors running and desperately trying to survive in full costume. But in all of this, the camera crew stands in the middle, all wearing puffy jackets. Which, yeah, honestly is a little funny, but also amazing, cause it shows the insane effort everyone was ready to give with this. Still, before the close-up look ends, the soldier begins to run directly into the action, with the cameras and boom mic operators hot on his tail. And as you can guess, we're left needing to follow. Next up, the novel The Action is based on. Well, Burger's All Quiet on the Western Front is based on Eric Maria Remarque's heart-pumping 1929 novel, and it's actually the third adaptation of the book, but the first by a German filmmaker, already breaking so many records. The story takes place during the darkest days of World War I and reveals audiences to a young group of recent German army recruits led by Felix Kammerer's Paul Baumer. Believe us, though this is one of Kammerer's first performances, he knocks it out of the park, and that's insane insanely important cause in this film, the tension is focused on these characters. Most of them haven't even reached 18 years, but they end up believing all of the war propaganda, saying they'll take part in an easy win, like there could ever be anything like that. As the grim reality of dark, muddy, and blood-covered battlefields become the daily lives of the young men, they realize they've been fooled by their government and will just be likely to return home alive. With how the world's going right now, guys, unfortunately, this focus of the plot definitely hits it's close to home. But that just means that this film can balance out the action with the emotions and if Dunkirk was any proof of that, you know that means you'll be leaving the cinema with a lot to think about. If that's not enough to convince y'all though, the movie also stars names like Daniel Brühl, Albrecht Schuck, Moritz Klaus, and so many more. Let's talk about it being the best anti-war movie yet. We know, we know. Insanely bold claim to make, but it could honestly be accurate. Look, since the movie was released on October 28th, everyone one's been accepting that this film is worth the watch. And somehow, the German adaptation has impressed both critics and audiences, with many saying it's the greatest anti-war film of all time. Honestly, in this day and age, if you've made both the critics and audiences like your work, you've done something right. But if you need more proof of that, guys, the critics' tomatometer score is right now 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the audience score is 90%. Come on now, you don't see that with every dramatic war movie out there, 
trust us, we've definitely been through enough of them. Some fans even went on to tweet out their love for the film, with someone saying stuff like, the 2022 version of All Quiet on the Western Front may be the best anti-war film I've seen in decades. It's beautiful. And another tweeted that All Quiet on the Western Front is such a powerful and sad film. The best anti-war film I've ever seen. So, you get the amount of hype this film has gotten, right? But still, to each their own when you've got a few hours to spare and the stomach for some gory scenes, maybe get out of your comfort zone a bit, because this story definitely deserves all the credit it can get. Of course, before the Oscars come around again. Up next, the iconic praises critics have sung. Because, come on, this ain't common, people. And definitely not when award submissions every day, Mark Johnson talked about it as one of the best war films ever made. But it doesn't stop there. He added that it's a jaw-dropping movie and an incredible piece of work. And it's not just one of the best films of the year, but it's one of the most needed war films ever made. And we do think that Eric Maria Remarque would admire Berger's unique approach to his historical take, because he's trying to show hope against all reason, and that we no longer will be made to repeat history. And that, guys, is beautiful. Wouldn't you agree? Either way, we can't describe to y'all the smile we've gotten reading some accurate critics' reactions, because finally, there are those we completely agree with. Like this one, critic Leah Greenblatt for Leisure Weekly also wrote that it's a movie that feels both amazing in its aesthetic and because it's filled with crucial truths. It's become an anti-war drama that goes above the darkness of propaganda, largely because it's so artfully and deeply made. And that, our dear friends, is how this film is also a good example that these intense events can be told with poetic cinema. With today's audience, that honestly makes the moments stand out more. But that might just be our take. Let us know what y'all think of these movies being made inspired by real-life events. Lastly, what exactly went into creating the battle scenes? Come on, it's legit so cool how they've done them. So, a little more hype over him is fair. The battle scenes are very carefully planned, and the director has recently commented on his process by sharing how they start with prepping them months in advance. Then, he spent three months in a room with the director of camera, James Friend, sketching every single frame, which just gives us more reason to take pride in our stick figures. But, as he said, if they'd compared the final shots, we'd notice that they're almost identical. Still, for him, it's exciting to see how planning can pay off. And if he does do different things in a movie and has a different take, it's probably because something was wrong in the first take, making them want to do something even better. That right there is called having confidence in your work. Because he admitted that if something didn't work at first, they would just keep going until it's their perfect vision. Honestly, hats off to a great result. That's a wrap for this video. Let us know whether we've convinced y'all to watch the film, or at least the behind the scenes we got. Because genuinely, it's a great filmmaking moment. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.